الله ربنا هو الإله له من الأسماء مصطفاه الواحد الحي السلام عليكم everyone Welcome to our virtual event for um, informative session on Masjid al-Aqsa, uh, our Qibla Awal. Uh, the chat is open for you guys. So uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, send it to either um, the host or the co-host directly or just uh, in the chat. The chat would be disabled for some time so that we don't have that much disturbance. Um, so before we begin, um, let's just give it a few more minutes, maybe uh, so that we have more participants. Mashallah, there's a lot of people joining. So just one more minute before we jump into the session. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi Shahli Sadri wa Isirli Amri wa Haluluqtatam Millisani Afkahu Qawli. Rabbi Zidni Ilma. So we will begin our session. Um, my name is uh, Sayyida Khan Sabatun. I am a teacher um, at MCNA Weekend School and also one of the admins. So um, before I, you know, we begin the session, I wanted to formally introduce to you guys uh, MCNA. Um, it is a project by ICNA Sisters Canada. So these are our locations. You can find MCNA on our ICNA Sisters website. Uh, these are our locations. You will find other programs. We've be, we've been having, um, you know classes for kids from um, SK uh, up to grade eight. Uh, we've been having, uh, uh, mashallah, we had a very successful summer camp uh, last year and we're gonna be having that again. You can find it on our website here. Uh, you can also register for the summer camp. It's all on our website. Uh, inshallah, we're, we also have our uh, weekend school even during COVID. Um, Alhamdulillah, that was a very successful uh, experience as well. So this was MCNA. To start our uh, session today, we will be um, starting with the recitation of the Holy Quran. Uh, our talk, which will be followed by our talk by Sister Imrana, we will um, be taking in your questions. Uh, we will have a uh, question and answer session uh, after um, our talk where we are going to stay, take some of your questions because we have uh, limited time. So we're gonna take some questions and Sister Imrana will be uh, answering those questions. We're also going to have a Kahoot session at the end of this um, presentation. Uh, where you you know you could be a part of that game we're going to be sharing the code so uh it is recommended that you guys put in the code and join beforehand uh yeah and any questions that you guys have you can just uh, send them directly so to begin we're going to be having the recitation by uh brother hamdan who is going to be uh reciting surah al saf ayah 10 to 14. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Hamdan and I will be reciting Surah Tuswaf, Ayahs 10 to 14 in the transliteration. A'uzu billahi minash shaytani rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu hal adullukum ala tijawatin tunjikum min azabin alim Tu'minuna billahi wa rasoolihi wa tujahiduna fi sabiilillahi bi amwalikum wa anfusikum ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون يغفر لكم ذنوبكم ويدخلكم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار من تحتها الأنهار ومساكن طيبة في جنات عدن ذلك الفوز العظيم وأخرى تحبونها نصر من الله 
وفتح قريب وبشر المؤمنين يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا أنصار الله كما قال عيسى بن مريم للحواريين من أنصاري إلى الله قال الحواريون نحن أنصار الله فآمن الطائفة فآمن الطائفة من بني إسرائيل وكفر الطائفة فعيدنا الذين آمنوا على عدوهم فأصبحوا ظاهرين صدق الله العظيم all you who believe, may I offer you a bargain which will save you from a painful punishment. Come to believe in Allah and His Apostle and struggle in the cause of Allah, wealth and soul. This will be good for you if you can understand. He will forgive you your sins and admit you to the gardens with rivers flowing by and excellent mansions in the Garden of Edith. This will be a great fulfillment and He will give you what is dearest to you. Have from Allah an early victory. So give good tidings to those who believe, or you who believe be helpers of Allah. As Isa, son of Maryam, has said to the disciples, Who will help me in the way of Allah? And they had answered, We are the helpers of Allah. Then a section among the children of Israel believed, but a section among them did not. So we helped those who believed against their enemies, and they prevailed over them. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. This is Imrana Mohyuddin. How is everyone doing today? I'll be your presenter for today's workshop, inshallah. And alhamdulillah, it's, it's an amazing feeling to uh, be able to sit here in Calgary, uh, to be able to conduct this workshop, and mashallah, seeing our youth, our future generation, our leaders joining us from all over Canada. And uh, I'm really excited for today's session. So let us begin. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlul uqdata min lisani yafqahu qawli. Rabbana zidna ilma, Rabbana zidna ilma. So once again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone. Uh, and I see, mashallah, so many of you have joined on our live session from YouTube and also on Zoom. So I'm really excited and I hope and pray that inshallah today's session is going to be beneficial and we are going to learn a lot of uh, information, a lot of reminders for us from the Quran and the sayings of the Prophet And before we begin, I was just thinking today is a really uh, nice day in Calgary and I am hoping that all over Canada, we have the same kind of weather because it's uh, start of summer and I'm sure all of you are waiting for your summer break to begin, isn't it? So let us begin, Bismillah. Firstly, I was just thinking that the blessing of us all gathering here virtually to learn about the importance of Masjid Al-Aqsa and why is it relevant for us as Muslims? And you know, lately you must have been seeing your I'm sure you've been attending a lot of rallies or you might have seen on uh, social media so much of talk happening about Al-Aqsa. So that is why we decided at ICNA Sisters and MCNA, how about we do a session for our children, you know, our MCNA students and for, you know, the community in general, for the kids in our community to uh, educate, to let the kids know, the future generation know about what is the importance of Masjid Al-Aqsa, what is the, uh, you know, significance for us as being Muslims. So, and I was thinking uh, while I was preparing for today's session that Masjid Al-Aqsa, anyone has idea what the word Al-Aqsa means? Anyone has any idea what Al-Aqsa means? Any clue? The word Al-Aqsa, yes, go ahead. You can, you can chat in the, uh, in the chat box. The word Al-Aqsa means, yes, does Nabil, uh, Nabil know or Hamna know? What does it mean? 
Any clue? It, yeah. So Al-Aqsa basically means the far away. And when we say Masjid Al-Aqsa, it basically means the far away mosque. So you might think, why uh, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that? Why the far away mosque? Why is Masjid Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem called the far away mosque? Any clue? Because it is, yeah, it is the farthest mosque far away from the, no, we, I'm, I'm going to share the video. It is far away from Mecca. So that is the meaning of Al-Aqsa. So now we know, alhamdulillah, the first thing that we know that we have learned is that Al-Aqsa means uh, the mosque that is far away from Mecca, isn't it? So let, when we talk about Masjid Al-Aqsa, I'm sure you must have so many uh, heard so many things. You must have read so many things about Masjid Al-Aqsa, the significance, the importance of it, the journey of Isra and Miraj, isn't it? I will be playing the video. So uh, just you know, uh, wait for a minute and the next slide, I'm going to share the video. So before we actually begin, before I actually uh, start uh, you know, explaining about all the details, so let us watch a short video explaining to us what is the significance? Why is it that all Muslims love Al-Aqsa? So let's wait and watch. Are you ready? Let's see, give me one minute, perfect. Let's watch. I want you all to read and watch carefully. It's a very informative video. It's a really good video for us to know. Yeah, there's no volume. You just have to read and watch the background, the video. Perfect. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about it so many times uh, in the Quran. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa talked about it in so many of his narrations. So this short clip shows us why is it important and we'll be talking about it again it's okay there's no volume in it uh Aisha there's no volume in it it's just a video clip it's an, and you will see all the points now is the third point it is the holiest place after Mecca and Medina and it has been mentioned so many times in the Quran isn't it and it is the only masjid built second masjid built after Kaaba. So we all know about the miraculous journey of Isra and Miraj. This is the place where it actually happened. Rasulullah he ascended to the heavens from this blessed place. And Rasulullah led all the prophets in salah. So point number five, the reward of praying in this blessed mosque. So how much is the reward? 500 times more when you pray it in any other masjid in Calgary, in Windsor, in Tor Toronto. So that is the significance. So now we know all the points, isn't it? Where, did all of you get all the points? Why is it important? We are now going to talk about it. Let's see. So the, what is the significance? When we talk about, uh, you know, why is Palestine so important to Muslims? So we need to learn and we need to get our reference from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so many times in the Quran and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa too mentioned about the blessing of Masjid al-Aqsa, about the blessing of Jerusalem or Palestine. So let us see the first thing is, it is a blessed land. And uh, in Quran, in Surah al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right at the start, at the first verse, mentions about that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was taken on a miraculous journey from uh, Masjid al-Aqsa to the heavens. So start from Mecca, from Mecca to Masjid al-Aqsa, and then from Masjid al-Aqsa to the seven heavens. So this is the significance of it. And the other thing is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions it by name in the Quran. So this ayah that you see in front of you, the first ayah of Surah al-Isra, the first verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the name Al-Aqsa. And we all know what Al-Aqsa means, isn't it? Al-Aqsa Masjid means the far away mosque, the masjid that is far away from Kaaba or Mecca, isn't it? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the neighborhood or that city is blessed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself mentions this to us. So imagine how blessed this land is for us. 
And the other thing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take Rasulullah on this blessed journey of Isra and Miraj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this first ayah of Surah Al-Isra to show Rasulullah the signs of Allah and the signs in the sense that he was taken to the uh, heavens and he was shown the, mir the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted Rasulullah to see. And we all know what is the significance of Isra and Miraj? What was the gift given to Rasulullah? The gift of Salah was given. And another thing that we learned is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wanted Rasulullah to, to, to see all the miracles with his own eyes. And the other thing is the fourth point that you see over here, the significance of Palestine to Muslims, is that the birth and burial of numerous messengers. There were so many prophets who uh, you know, lived there, uh, they died there, they conveyed the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this blessed land of Palestine. So this is why Palestine is beloved to each and every Muslim. And point number five, if you see on your screen, only place on earth where all the messenger of Allah prayed at the same time led by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and I'm sure you must have learned this in uh, detail in uh, MCNA classes. If you haven't, we will inshallah see it in the next few slides. So basically, uh, Rasulullah, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was taken on this miraculous journey from Mecca, from Kaaba to Jerusalem. And there he led Salah, or he was the one who led the Salah, and all the prophets followed him in Salah. So basically it showed that now he is the leader. Now the leadership is in the hands of the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So that is the significance of uh, you know, praying in uh, Jerusalem. Let's move on to our next slide. So isn't it interesting so far? Let's move on. So the significance of Palestine to Muslims, we will uh, see more details is that Muslims were commanded to turn towards this mosque in Jerusalem for Salah. So even before, like right now, when we all pray, we face the Kaaba, isn't it? We face the Kaaba in Mecca. Before that, all the Muslims, they used to face Jerusalem for Salah. So imagine our first Qibla was Jerusalem. So that itself shows us that this place is blessed. It is important for you and me, for us to respect, for us to hold it close to our heart. Then point number six is that it is the third holiest site. And imagine Rasulullah he was taken on this miraculous journey from this blessed land of Palestine. So it shows that this land is indeed blessed and holy. Okay. And remember in the short clip, we also saw the reward of doing salah in Masjid al-Aqsa. So when a person prays in Mecca, his salah is worth 100,000 in reward. And if a person prays in Medina, in the blessed mosque of Rasulullah, then that reward is worth 1,000. And if a person has the opportunity, has the blessing of being able to visit the sacred place in Palestine of Masjid al-Aqsa, then his reward of praying salah over there is 500 times. So imagine, uh, you know, how blessed this land is. Isn't it? Let's move on. Let's go on to the next slide. So when we talk about the uh, location of Palestine, are all of you familiar with the location, like where is it located? All of us are, I'm sure all of you are uh, joining from Canada, but Palestine is really far away from us. And it is basically in the Middle East. And if you see here on your screen, you can see that it is close to Egypt or it is close to Saudi Arabia. Yes. And it is basically right in the middle of, you might think, in middle of the continents, right in the middle, the center, the focal point of the globe. Isn't it an amazing location for this blessed uh, place to be? Let's move on. And let's look closer. So Palestine is the country 
and uh, Jerusalem is the capital. I'm sure all of you are aware of it, isn't it? And sadly, we, you know, you might have seen that there's so much of conflict happening in uh, Jerusalem right nowadays, isn't it? Why? We will see that in a while. So when we talk about Al-Aqsa, it is not just one mosque, but it is the whole compound. And I will show you uh, in one of the next slides, inshallah, you will be able to see that Al-Aqsa is basically a huge compound and it has a lot of other things of significance for us. So you must have seen this uh, Dome of the Rock in so many pictures, isn't it? On uh, social media, on uh, so many news and any images that you see about, if you type in Palestine, you will see the first image that will pop up is Dome of the Rock. So Dome of the Rock is also called as Qubat al-Sakhra. And Qubat al-Sakhra basically means the golden or uh, dome. Or uh, there is usually misunderstanding about this being Masjid al-Aqsa. This is inside the compound of Masjid al-Aqsa, but this is not al-Aqsa. So what is al-Aqsa? Let's move on. So this is for us to have a better view and understanding about what is Masjid al-Aqsa or what is the whole compound and what is the, uh, you know, the, the, the historical places that has, uh, you know, so much of significance, not just for the Muslims, but also for the Jews and the Christians. So I'm sure uh, you won't be able to read the smaller text, but I'm just going to quickly go over them. So Masjid al-Aqsa is basically uh, you know, this huge compound that you see on your screen. And we have on, if you see my cursor, the Burak uh, wall. If you see, sorry. If you see over here on your left side, the Burak wall. I'm sure all of you have heard during the journey of Isra and Miraj about Burak. Any clue what Al-Burak is? It is, it is the special animal. Yes, the horse on which Rasulullah mounted on and he was taken to the heavens isn't it yes that's true so this is the place which you see over here the wall that is the burak wall where rasulullah he rode that animal and he was taken uh, uh, from mecca to jerusalem on that uh, uh, on that animal and interestingly this burak wall is holds lot of importance for the Jews too. And they consider it to be the Western Wall or the Wailing Wall. And the other thing we see over here, there is, a, you know, you see so many gates, obviously, because it's a huge compound. This masjid is Masjid al-Qibli. You must have seen this gray domed masjid. So that is also in the compound. And this dome, as you see here, the golden dome, it is uh, uh, you know, it is, as we said, Dome of the Rock, also known as Qubat al-Sakhra. This structure was built by a caliph of Islam, and it was built long time back, okay? And uh, it is believed that Rasulullah, he ascended to the heavens. He went to the heavens with Jibreel, alayhi salam, from this exact point, okay? Perfect. Now let's move on. If you see on your right, there are so many other details. Inshallah, you can uh, go on uh, uh, YouTube and when we have the recording and everything, you can see this map in detail. Let's move on because we have a lot of fun things to do. So when we talk about Masjid, uh, Masjid al-Aqsa, about Palestine, about Jerusalem, you might have seen lately and on and off, there's so much of unrest going on uh, in this area, isn't it? So why? Because this place is, you know, as I mentioned, has a lot of significance, not just for the Muslims, but also for the Jews and the Christians. So political reasons and, you know, there's conflict and about who gets to have the, uh, you know, uh, to have the control over it. And sadly, uh, you know, as so many places in the world, people are being persecuted, the Palestinians are being persecuted. But before we go on to that, I wanted to mention that Palestine in uh, you know, long time back, it was a peaceful place. When Muslims were the leaders, when they had hold of Jerusalem, they made sure that it was a land of peace. It was a land where everyone was allowed to worship their own religion. And when we talk about Muslim leaders of the past, even at the time of Umar, he made sure that each and every uh, believer 
Muslim or Jew or Christian, they had the right to worship. So this is what Muslim leadership did in the past. And when we talk about Muslim heroes, uh, for us to know, have you ever heard about uh, Salahuddin Ayyubi? Have you ever heard about him? Why is he famous? Why is he considered to be a hero? Not, to, not just among Muslims, but also among Jews and Christians. We will see about him in today's session, inshallah, we're gonna learn about who was Salahuddin, inshallah. Let's see, okay? So I'm sure you're gonna learn so much information in today's session and you will be sharing it with your friends and with your parents, inshallah. So let us see who was Salahuddin and why was he famous? What's the connection of Salahuddin with Palestine, with Masjid Al-Aqsa? Okay, ready for it? Let's see this interesting, very informative video. So there's no sound in it. I just want you to watch it and read the text. Why everyone respected and loved him so much. So number one reason is that he prevented so much of killing in the 11th century. So Salahuddin is the one who was following Islam. He was a great leader because he was following the Quran and Sunnah. So that is what we should be doing. When we have leaders, when we have someone as role model, we should see that are they following the Quran and Sunnah? So he was the one who, you know, captured everyone's heart. Why? Because of his love for peace and justice for all and he was very brave so he had a kind heart he was one who was always helping always wanting to bring peace to this disputed area in palestine so he was the one who followed noble islamic values so he was not just one who you know talked about so many things but he was the one who implemented whatever he learned in the quran and sunnah so that's something that we are doing. Alhamdulillah, all of you are students of MCNA. And Alhamdulillah, MCNA is a great opportunity for all of us to learn about the Quran and Sunnah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And mashallah, all of you are great leaders of tomorrow. So and this that we are learning, this workshop that we are attending today, inshallah, you're going to learn it, the significance, the history, uh, the importance for it for Muslims, for Jews, for Christians, and you are the ones who are going to go out in the community and represent what true Islam is. True Islam is what? That we are the ones who bring peace to any place we live in. We are the ones who are kind to everyone, no matter which faith the other person belongs to. So remember, I talked about the significance of Palestine for the Jews and the Christians. So let's look here in Judaism. Uh, you know, Jerusalem is considered to be a very holy place. And that is why we see the dispute happening. And that is why, sadly, we see there's not much of peace for the people. And especially a few days back, we saw that there were many children who were killed. So we as Muslims, we need to be role models. We need to be the ones who are, you know, spreading that message of peace, of bringing us together that you know, is common between all the people of love, message of love and brotherhood and, you know, showing kindness to each other. And in Christianity too, Christians also hold this place, you know, of significance. Why? Because Isa alayhi salam was brought as a child to this place and he preached, he, you know, conveyed the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this blessed city. And we also know that Isa alayhi salam uh, was the second last prophet of Islam. Before the coming of Rasulullah, it was Isa Islam who came in that area as a prophet. Yes, and Jerusalem, uh, the Arabic word for the word Jerusalem is Al Quds. So uh, I'm sure you must have heard this word again and again. Al Quds is the Arabic word for Jerusalem. Perfect. So let's look here. If you want to visit Masjid Al-Aqsa, I'm sure by looking at all this history, the significance, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took Rasulullah on this miraculous journey from this blessed place. So I'm sure we all want to go and you know, visit this blessed place, but because you know, we are living so far away and maybe because of uh, the turmoil, uh, the unrest that's happening, we might not be able to go uh, in the near future. But you can have the same reward. And in this very beautiful hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said that if one of us cannot visit Al-Aqsa, what should we do? 
The prophet, peace be upon him, replied, then he should make a gift of some oil to the to be lit there in its lamps, for indeed the one gives this to it will be like the one who has prayed there. So subhanAllah, such a beautiful hadith. All of us, by learning the history, the significance of this blessed place, we now know that, oh, it is such a blessed place. We know that the reward of praying over there is 500 times, isn't it? So we want to go there. I'm sure all of you want to go to Mecca and Medina, isn't it? I'm sure most of you must have already been there, isn't it? You were blessed enough to go and uh, do Salah, do Umrah, do Hajj maybe. But as a believer, we also have this desire to be able to visit Masjid Al-Aqsa. But if we are not, then then you can give some donation. And inshallah, towards the end, we will see some call to action. What should we be doing? How can I help? And you might think, oh, you know, I'm just a student in grade four or five, or, you know, what can I do from here? Make sure you donate for this cause. You know, make sure you donate whatever you can. Maybe you can donate from, uh, you know, the pocket money you get. Something that you can also ask others to do. You can, you know, uh, share it with your friends that this is the reward that uh, we come to know about. If I donate, I will get the reward of uh, praying over there. So another thing is, why should we care? We just talked about it. This is a very beautiful hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. We think, oh, it's just so far away. Why is it relevant? Mashallah, uh, Sister uh, Ayana says that she went so many times. Barakallah feek. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the opportunity to go there again and again to Makkah, Medina, and to Masjid al-Aqsa. So why should we be care caring about this place? Why? Because in this very beautiful hadith, Rasulullah tells us that the example, the parable of a believer is that they have compassion for each other. So when the people of Palestine, when the children of Palestine, they are suffering, when the people in Al-Aqsa, they are suffering, the children are suffering, we need to feel their uh, sorrow. We need to feel what they are going through. And not just have that feeling, but we need to raise our hands and make dua for them. We need to educate others, you know, use social media. So this is the importance of what can I do and why should I be caring? So let's move on. Okay, let's move on. The call to action. We learned so many details about uh, why is it important? What is the significance? The reward of praying there, isn't it? So seek the truth. This is what we are doing. This is what MCNA is about, isn't it? MCNA is what? Learn, believe, and lead. So in today's session, when we have gathered here virtually, there are more than 100 participants, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each one of you, your parents, your siblings, your friends, and all your MCNA teachers who are giving you this opportunity to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are learning now about the importance. Inshallah, you're going to, uh, you know, put it into action and then become leaders. You're not just going to, you know, remember Allah about uh, Salati. So you're not just going to be learners, but you're going to be the one who's going to lead the community with your beautiful action. Okay, so the blessed land is important and significant for all Abrahamic faiths, for everyone, isn't it? Yes. Yes, not just as Muslims, but as good citizens. That's what Islam teaches us. Excellent point what Maz has just shared. And share the truth. This is what we learned. This is what we uh, just discussed about, isn't it? That Muslims, we are the ones who don't want any uh, bloodshed. We don't want any suffering to be happening anywhere in the world. We are the ones who are peace lovers. And that's what we learned about Saladin, uh, Umar Adilan, who also did that, and the people of Palestine also want the same. They want peace. Support the Palestinians. You know, there are so many donations happening at the end. Inshallah, we'll be seeing a, a project that ICNA Relief is doing. So you can support the Palestinians by one of the projects at ICNA Relief, Inshallah. And stand up for the human rights of Palestinians. You know, well, it's, it's, we'll be starting Kahoot in two minutes. Just give me two minutes. So stand up for the human rights of Palestinians. So, you know, we don't want any suffering to be happening to anyone, especially the children anywhere in the world, isn't it? So now that we know the significance, we respect 
each and other uh, person's faith, you know, if the Jews, the Christians, we respect them, but we always will stand for the human rights of people, especially the Palestinians now that they are suffering and they're being uh, persecuted. And the last thing is use social media and be vocal about it. Maybe in one of your conversations, you can let others know that this is the truth. This is why, you know, it is important for the Muslims. This is the significance. And we as Muslims, our religion teaches us to promote peace, to promote brotherhood. And all faiths have the same beginning, isn't it? We all know that even though Al-Aqsa, this place, is the lot of dispute is happening, but we know that Jerusalem is the place that should unify us, should unite our hearts, isn't it? So Jerusalem is a place that is close to our hearts, or Palestine is a place that is close to our hearts. Why? Because this is the place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, kept so much of blessing for all the prophets who came in that place, for Rasulullah to be taken on that miraculous journey. And the last thing is make a lot of dua, inshallah. And that is the thing that the people of Palestine need. So that is my part. Uh, and uh, we will also be, uh, uh, you know, on your website, if you see, you can send letters to support uh, Palestine. MCNA students can access the activities. There are so many activities on the uh, website. So do uh, take part in all these initiatives that Alhamdulillah MCNA is doing for you. And inshallah, uh, be part of that, uh, uh, bringing peace and uh, you know, love and support for the people in that place, inshallah. Okay, so now it's time for Kahoot. I'm sure all of you are waiting eagerly. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Sister Samaya, and I will be conducting your Kahoot for today. I really hope everyone was paying attention because I have a couple questions for you and inshallah, we'll see who is paying attention the most. So the code is right up there at the top. It's 7401574. So we'll wait for about a minute for everyone to join in. There's a lot of members in today, inshallah. So we'll make sure that everyone's in and then we'll start. There will be 10 questions talking about everything that we've discussed today. And I really hope that everyone was paying attention because some of them are a little harder. So we'll make sure to see that who is paying attention the most. Get about 15 more seconds and then we'll continue. Someone came in named as Burak. I wonder who you are. All right. Mashallah. Okay, let's begin. I'm going to be starting. Three, two, one. So your first question is, which surah mentions Masjid al-Aqsa directly? Surah Bani Israel or Surah Isra? Surah Ibrahim, Surah Ala or Surah Buruj? You have 10 seconds left. Yes, it was Surah Isra. It's the only place where it's mentioned. And most of you did get that right, mashallah. And on our leaderboards, we have Fight for Palestine right at the top. Let's see who comes up next. Our second question is, what does Masjid al-Aqsa mean? If you remember, we discussed this very early on. Ten seconds left.
Yes, it's the far away mosque, right? It is a blessed mosque. The Dome of the Rock is near, but the actual meaning of Al-Aqsa is that it is far away. And Fight for Palestine is still at the very top, but Amina is coming up too. Your third question is, Palestine is a blessed land for who? Christians, Jews, Muslims, or all of the above? There are 10 seconds left. If you remember, Palestine is in a very special place on the world. Not just Jews. I know a lot of people said Jews, but it's special for Christians, Jews, and Muslims. Fight for Palestine is still at the top. Wow, mashallah. Your next question is, the reward for praying in Masjid al-Aqsa is how many? 10 times, 100 times, 500 times, or 1,000? And a lot of people answered this very quickly. But it's easy to mess this question up. So let's see who got the right answer. Yes, 500 times. Um, it is only 500 times, but that is still a lot, right? Definitely not 1,000, though. Fight for Philistines still at the top, but Taha Salman is moving up too. Next question is a true or false question. Prophet Muhammad journey to the heavens went from Mecca to Palestine and then to the heavens. Is this true or false? Make sure you have the order right. Five more seconds. It is true. He went to Mecca and then Palestine to Masjid Al-Aqsa and then the heavens where he met the prophets. Oh, Fife for Palestine went down three levels. Now Hassan Q is at the top. Here's, there are five more questions. The next one is, which masjid is mentioned by name in the Holy Quran besides the Kaaba? Masjid al nabi Masjid Al-Aqsa, Masjid Aisha, or Masjid Umar? Five more seconds. Yes, it is Masjid Al-Aqsa. And if you remember from the first question, it was in Surah Isra. Baha Salman is coming up to the top. Let's see if he continues this for the next few questions. This one is true or false. Palestine is a place and of birth and burial for numerous prophets of Islam. Is this true or false? Ten more seconds. Remember the previous few questions when we talked about how important it was. It is true. It is true. Uh, prophets from every, like from the Judaism and Christianity, they were also born in, like they still believe that some prophets were born and they died there as well. The Hasalman is still at the top. Now for a quiz question. Masjid al-Aqsa is one of the mosques that will be a safe place against who? The Yajuj and Majuj, the Dajjal, the false messiah, or the beast? Let's see if you guys remember this one. There are five more seconds left. Make sure you have your answer in. The Dajjal, yeah, it's going to be one of the places that it will be completely safe from the Dajjal. He won't be able to access. Hassan Q is back in first place. Let's see if he's able to keep that up. Ninth question is the second last question. Which of the following was a Muslim leader who worked for justice and peace in Palestine and Jerusalem? Saladin Ayubi, Ibn Battuta, Ibn Sina, or Suleiman al -Islam? He did many, many good things for the people of Palestine and Jerusalem, if you remember from our class today. Yes, it was Saladin Ayubi. If you guys remember the video that we watched earlier, he was a warrior and he helped them a lot. Fight for Philistine is back at the top, but we have Hamna and Asma coming up too. Let's see who gets the last question right. Very last question. 
According to the Prophet وسلم, which three mosques should be traveled to? Make sure you read the answers carefully. Masjid al-Haram, Masjid al-Nabi, and Masjid al-Aqsa. Masjid al-Umar, Masjid al-Quba, and Qadatayn. Masjid al-Nur, Masjid al-Nabi, and Masjid al-Haram. Or Masjid al-Amr, Masjid Abu Bakr, and or Masjid Ali. Pay close attention to the writing here. It was the first one, Masjid al-Haram, Masjid al-Nabi in Medina, and Masjid al-Aqsa in Palestine. So let's see who won today. In third place, we have Asma Bhatti. Well done, mashallah. You got 10 out of 10. Hamna came second place with 10 out of 10. And Fight for Palestine is back at the top with 10 out of 10. Congratulations. And congratulations to Palestinian and Amina for coming as well. Mashallah, good job. Mashallah, that was amazing. Uh, I was really impressed to see, even though some of the questions were pretty hard, but mashallah, you guys did an amazing job. So was it was it fun? You uh, enjoyed the Kahoot? You got to uh, basically summarize through the Kahoot whatever we learned today, isn't it? Mashallah, barakallah fikum. So something else I was just thinking about, uh, when we talk about you know MCNA, we were just talking about the importance of learning, and we are a nation of Iqra. Remember the first revelation? The chat is now open. If anyone has any questions, inshallah, they can ask. We have uh, some time. Jazakallah uh, to uh, Sister uh, Sumaya for the Kahoot and mashallah, Sister Hansa for showing, uh, Hansa for showing us the uh, important, uh, you know, uh, opportunities that MCNA is providing for all of us. So what about uh, uh, Iqra? What, what is the relevance of Iqra? What comes to your mind? Alhamdulillah, it was fun. Yes, Sadia says that it was fun. Alhamdulillah. So when we talk about Iqra, we are a nation of Iqra. Yes, we are a nation of read, isn't it? Yes. The first revelation, the first word that Rasulullah received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was Iqra, read, isn't it? So it shows that Iqra means to read. It shows that we as Muslims need to educate ourselves. We need to gain knowledge. And with knowledge, comes big responsibility too. Now that we have learned so much about uh, Masjid al-Aqsa, the significance for us, for Muslims, and uh, for you know the other faiths too, are we just going to be emotional about it? Are we going to be just you know angry about what's happening uh, in Palestine, all the killing, all the all the thing that's happening? What should we be doing? Good job, mashallah, uh, for for all the participants. Uh, everyone is a winner because mashallah you, you took the time you attended today yes no worries but alhamdulillah the main focus was we learn so our learning should help us should, should motivate us to implement whatever we learn isn't it so we shouldn't just be emotional we shouldn't be you know oh i'm angry i'm upset about what's happening in palestine all the uh you know uh the bloodshed all the persecution that's happening but Islam teaches us that we should be the ones who are, you know, implementing what we learn. We are the ones who are going to promote peace in all of uh, the world. We should be the ones who educate others about what the reality is, isn't it? So this is what Islam teaches us. This is what Alhamdulillah MCNA is giving us that opportunity. So any questions? So far, anyone has any questions about today's presentation? Any comments, any suggestions for future, inshallah? If no one has any questions, any suggestions for uh, uh, summer camp or in future uh, uh, MCNA sessions? Mashallah barakallah fikum. Yes, mashallah, we have so many students. We have around uh, 100 uh, or more than 100 students, mashallah barakallah fikum. Alhamdulillah. Nice. Everyone enjoyed. I'm really happy that you enjoyed and you got to learn so many things. Now you know what is the significance and what should we be doing? Okay, let's do some, is Palestine still doing oil donations? No, not oil donations, but you can inshallah donate uh, you know, in different ways and inshallah, Sister Hansa is going to share this uh, or I will play the video inshallah and see about how Ikna Relief uh, is helping the people in Palestine. So we will see that. And if, uh, did I miss any questions? If you have, when was the Qibla changed? So after the migration of Rasulullah to Medina, so uh, I think 17 or 18 months after the Prophet moved to Medina, migrated to Medina, then the command came that the Qibla is now changed. 
Okay. Someone asked the question. Okay. Perfect. No, it's not a real goal. That's how the look is. Perfect. Any other questions? So let's watch this short clip about how we can help, isn't it? So, mashallah, I see the enthusiasm. We all want to do our part. We want to, uh, you know, practically implement whatever we learned today. We learned that we have to help them. So go on to this link. The admin has shared the link. Go and, inshallah, motivate your parents. You can share with your friends and donate as much as possible. Perfect. Let's let's watch this short clip, okay? Are, are, are you ready? Let's see. So this is how Ikna Relief is helping by providing them cooked meals and food packages. Perfect. So now you know what to do, isn't it? So many of you were interested to learn about what can I do? How can I help? And remember, you can send letters to support Palestine too. So go on to our website and inshallah, you can see uh, those details. I see that we have a few questions. Uh, let me quickly answer those questions. Uh, so one of the question was, uh, did the people pray towards Al-Aqsa even with the Kaaba still there? Yes, the Kaaba was the first uh, house of Allah built, isn't it? But because of the command Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given that Qibla is for, is towards Al-Aqsa. And later on, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was commanded that the Qibla is now changed. The prayer direction is changed from Masjid Al-Aqsa to, uh, um, to Kaaba. And we, if you want to read more details, if some of you are interested, you can uh, go on and the second juz starts off with that. Okay, the change of the Qibla. Perfect. And there was another question. Uh, we have around four minutes, so I'll just uh, do the other question. So is uh, when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, went to the heaven, there were five prayers then? No. Salah uh, was there, but five daily salah was not uh, yet uh, commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Yes. So I guess we have answered everyone. Any other questions? It was initially in that journey, it was 50, but later Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reduced it on the request of Rasulullah to just five daily salah. Yes. So remember, today's take home points are what? You're not going to be emotional. You're not going to be upset. We are going to help the, this cause by donating to the people. By, you know, we can also boycott so many uh, products who are, you know, uh, that are harming the Palestinians. So make sure when you go to the market, see whatever products are being made in Palestine, you can buy them. You can support the Palestinian economy, the Palestinian people, inshallah. Make a lot of duas. Yes. So what's your take home point? Some of them, Juwaria said salah, Malak said salah, uh, you know, making dua, inshallah. What else? What else can you do? Doing dua, donations, Abdullah says dua. Perfect. So inshallah, that's your thing that you're going to do today. Uh, or tomorrow, Friday, you're going to donate something, even if it is $5. The amount doesn't matter. Your intention matters. How many profits? They're numerous. We don't know the count. Yes. Go to our website and inshallah, you can see uh, the details about how can we write letters to create awareness. Okay? Perfect. So we can end it here, uh, Sister Hansek. You can inshallah conclude. Jazakallah khair, barakallah fikum. I really enjoyed today's session. I hope that it was beneficial for all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those people who not just gain knowledge, but we spread it to others. And we are true leaders of Islam. We are the ones who are going to represent Islam in the true manner that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us. Be the ones who spread peace and love and uh, brotherhood throughout the world and stop any kind of persecution or make sure that you know all people around the world, the Palestinians, they have basic human rights. Jazakallah khair, barakallah fikum, subhanakallah wa bihamdik, nashir Allah ilaha ilanta, nastaghfirka wa natubu ilaik. Over to you, Sister Hansa. 
Jazakallah, Sister Rana uh, and Sister Samaya. Alhamdulillah uh, for this amazing session. It was packed with information. Uh, we learned so much about the history of Masjid Al-Aqsa and Palestine. Um, may Allah bring us all together um, as an ummah, make us capable of using our voices uh, to create awareness and give us the ability to protect our brothers and sisters in suffering. Jazakallah to all of you for taking time out to join us today. May Allah reward you, inshallah. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samiyun aleem. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka. Wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum. Mm-hmm.